Hello again. We're going to see now what is Kedro exactly and what are its main features. So first of all, a uh, couple of numbers about Kedro. So Kedro is a Python framework for data science projects. It was created internally at Quantum Black, acquired by McKinsey in 2017 as an internal project that we were using for our consulting engagements. And later on, we open sourced it in 2019. And later, we donated it to the Linux Foundation AI and Data Initiative so that we could evolve it as an open standard. It has a number of interesting behaviors. For example, it reduces the time spent rewriting data science experiments so that they are fit to production. It encourages harmonious team collaboration and improves productivity. And it upskills all collaborators so that they can know how to apply software engineering principles to data science codes. There's a number of companies, big and small, that make part of the Kedro community, and we are still working to make it bigger and keep evolving it in the future. So Kedro has a number of interesting features. Let's start diving a little bit into those. So first of all, Kedro offers a project template that allows you to cleanly separate the source code from the data, the configuration, your notebooks, and any other assets that you have. This can be customized to your needs, but in principle, Kedro offers one possible way of structuring it. On top of that, it also has a data catalog, which is a layer that allows you to declaratively define what are your data sets, where your data lives, what kind of objects do you need to load and save it, and so on. This will allow you to decouple the code that performs the analysis from where your data is exactly. Apart from that, all the Kedro projects are extracted around nodes and pipelines. So nodes will be specific functions that perform some sort of processing. And then all these functions will be arranged according to their inputs and outputs so that they can form a pipeline. And then Kedro will execute that pipeline, sorting the steps in the right order to respect all the inputs and outputs. Kedro also offers pipeline visualization tools and experiment tracking so that you can see how your project is structured and also keep evolving and iterating on it. All of this can be extended through the use of hooks that you can use to create your own plugins or reuse some of the plugins that were created by the community or maintained by the core team. This will cover a large area of your whole MLOps workflow. And then, if you want, you can deploy your Kedro project using some of the available integrations for open source orchestrators or commercial platforms. Let's dive a little bit more into some of the features. The project template can be customized to your needs, as we were saying before. There's a number of starters, as we call them, that you can use with some pre-existing integrations, or you can define your own so that you can quickly start uh, new projects the way you like. In addition, there's a pipeline visualization tool called KedroVis that allows you to see how your different nodes take inputs and produce outputs and how your whole pipeline is arranged. In addition, Kedro ships one of the world's most advanced configuration libraries out there. Thanks to this, you can use some advanced tips and tricks, like for example, templating or reusing some of your configuration entries for data access, your parameters, or your credentials. This is how a Kedro project looks in a nutshell. So you have on the left a visualization of how the pipeline looks like. There are the data sets on top that flows to the nodes that are in the middle and some of those nodes produce some intermediate data sets. And finally, we have uh, some result that we care about. In the middle, you have how your data catalog looks like. It's a YAML file that contains all the data set definitions, both the inputs, the intermediate results, and the outputs. And each entry contains things like where exactly the file is. This can be a local location or a remote location, what specific object we're going to use to load it, and finally, whether we're versioning that data set or not. This can be useful if we're keeping track of some of the changes in the data set. And finally, on the right, you have the definition of the pipeline in Python code that links everything together. So you can see how the different nodes take some data sets as inputs, and produce some data sets as outputs. These are linked directly to the data set names that we have in the catalog. And all of these are linked together with the pipeline definition so that Kedro knows how to execute everything together. There's a number of ways you can know more about Kedro. On one hand, we have our blog in which we publish technical blog posts so that you can know a little bit better how to convert some existing work that you have to a full-fledged Kedro project. On the other hand, we have our Kedro Viz demo. And with this, you can see without installing anything, how a typical Kedro project looks like and how you can navigate the different nodes and pipelines. 
We also recommend you to check out our documentation. It contains the spaceflights tutorial that we're going to follow in the next videos and also different technical guides so that you can see how the different features work. Finally, we would like to encourage you to join our Kedro community. We have a Slack workspace where people from all over the world share their insights on how they're using Kedro. They ask questions and they answer each other. And in general, they connect with other people that are using Kedro as well. In the next videos, we're going to understand a little bit more how Kedro is connected with the rest of the ecosystem.